to the Wednesday edition of the Box Seat. I'm Adam McGrath and joined by Mark Olmos. Mark, eight races to take a look at. Some nice weather expected as well, so perfect signs for racing in the West. Yes, Adam, and one of those maidens had a lot of nominations, so they split it up to two divisions and it's great to see we have eight races, all competitive as well, Adam. These three-year-olds are coming up. Let's have, take a look at the conditions that we are going to be faced with. Uh, we are expecting good conditions. As we mentioned, the Moobal Rail is out 18 metres with a cutaway in the straight. Now, that normally does suit some on-speed runners when you are doing your form. But let's get tra straight into it. Let's try to find some winners, and we'll start with that 1,200-metre maiden. Uh, full field, as you mentioned, Mark. Yeah, Adam, it's a ripping field. Uh, 18, of course, in the field, but with the two emergencies, sorry, four emergencies, be down to 14. We'll have a look at Petit Dancer here. It was an impressive performance last start. Just got a little bit... Lost at Northern. Kingdom and Empire trying to weave its way through between horses at the 300 and what's up Doc on the outside. In front led three quarters. Now here comes Petite Dancer and down the outside is Ryama as well at the 200 and Petite Dancer shifting ground. Ryama, what's up Doc's in the middle. It's Petite Dancer running around. Ryama the outside levelling up to it. Ryama hits the lead. Ryama. Ryama beat Petite Dancer. It's an interesting run there by Petite Dancer. I still don't know whether I liked it or I didn't and I looked at the comparison with What's Up Doc. So Petite Dancer, as you saw there, finishing second. What's Up Doc was sitting in that forward position and finished third. And I didn't find too much between them. Now, you see that they drop back 100 metres, which I think suits What's Up Doc, which is a natural leader. And What's Up Doc gets a two kilo swing here. So although Pete Petite Dancer should improve again, I'm not very confident on what I saw. I think it's a nice type, but may just want a little bit further ground. Yeah, I think she's a very, very nice filly. But like you said, at a maybe next preparation, you saw as when she got to the front, she's all very new to it and had to be scrubbed along by William Pike. And she was left out in front for a while. Riyama did have the drop on her. So, look, I'm willing to forgive that run and uh, go with her again here. I think she's a nice type. Whatever she does this uh, preparation, she'll build on. It's all raw at the moment. So looking forward to seeing her. Maybe next preparation. We've also got in the race number six, Cool Night. The blinkers go on. This Grant and Alana Williams train galloper. And Glenn Smith rides the first starter. Yeah, this was a nice trial, wasn't it? He just sort of sat there comfortably. And then when Glenn Smith said, let's go, the gears just started turning through. And this horse attacked the line to win the trial by two and a half lengths. Beating Speeding Comet, which of course raced on Saturday in a nice performance. The blinkers weren't on Speeding Comet for that trial. But this horse looks to be really nice. From barrier three, they should be able to sit just behind the leaders as well, not have to do the donkey work through the early stages on debut, so I think it's certainly a winning chance. Number three's melting point from the Jessica Vallis yard, of course uh, William Pike jumps off this one Alan Kennedy gets the ride, it's two performances this time in behind the Kelton Samovaro, both very good and has to be respected. I'm, I'm not reading into the jockey change all here, William Pike has to ride for the Cerise and White, and if William Pike's on melting point it's going out at a $1.80, so the four lines here are way superior to anything else in the race beaten two lengths by the Kelton, 0 0.8 lengths by Samovaro, the blinkers go on Barrier one, melting point should get the best run of the race and be very hard to beat. I'm going to put it on top number three from six, cool night. Number 14, Vermont Lady and at number 12, Court. I've got the seven on top, Adam Explosion. From the 15, Imaginary. Number 10, Tick Dancer. And the six, Cool Night. Race number two at Belmont Park, the 1,200 metre maiden as well. And Mark, I'm really excited about this race. I think there's three or four very handy types that we'll see racing on Saturdays and winning on Saturdays as well. Yeah, the trial we'll have a look at, Adam. There's another one that runs second in there that's entered for the following race. Have a look at that one as well, Dago Lad, but focus on the winner, Stoicism. Uh, heelsing into the clear is Black Stellar. Makes the line of three and four as they head down the straight. Sneaking up behind runners is Stoicism. And they have uh, dropped off at the tail of the field there is... Is uh, now Churches, but down the straight with about 150 to go. About a line of three and four off the track. The one coming home best is Stoicism in the centre. Took the split, dashed to the top, and has gone on to win. Stoicism beats second. Gee, it was a nice trial, wasn't it, Mark? The way that this horse was just sort of hidden behind, and when pulled out by William Pike, attacked the line strongly. And I still felt like, although getting through the soft ground nicely, didn't quite appreciate that much. It's going to be much better on, on a good four. I don't like to jump into horses too much and say they're a best bet, especially when you've got a horse like Equine Wiz, which has had a few races this prep and has had a good two-year-old prep as well. But I thought this goes pretty close to being the best of the day, which is a massive say, considering, as I said, I have a really good opinion of Equine Wiz, Take No Prisoners and Qualista in the same race. But this horse just showed so much potential. And of course, as it's a first starter as well, you don't like to dive into those. But I'm with you, Adam. I think it was just a very, very impressive improvement to come as well. And you saw when he got to the front, William Pike with his white gloves just gave, gave a little tap along to make sure sure he knew that he was going to the races very very soon we've also got in the race stable mate western temple there blinkers go on this galloper it was also a nice trial it was uh, 
wasn't completely asked the question, but it was very good. Out of a jeune mare, so that would suggest that this galloper will get further in the future. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking at for this race. Look, I thought the trial was fair, but I thought the horse was also spinning, and I watched it a couple of times, and the legs looked as though they were going everywhere. I think this uh, three-year-old is very raw. I think uh, you'll be waiting for that 14 to 1,600 metres. The blinkers go on, will sharpen up a little bit, but I had stoicism well in front of this one. One who's already had a preparation is number 10, Qualista, from the Justin Warwick Yard. Lucy Warwick rides here, and that recent trial up the straight at Pinjarra was very, very good. I was a massive fan of this horse last campaign, backed it on all occasions and just knew it was going to get better with more ground. It's a half to Boutique and Brocky's, Dancer, uh, Brocky's Deal, sorry, which does suggest that it is going to want 1,800 to 2,200 metres as well. Uh, from the trial, I said I would declare it first up. Now, that just shows how much I think to Stoicism, the potential that Galloper has, because Quillista is a serious Galloper, but I have to go with Stoicism here. Number seven on top from 10, Quillista, one Equine Wiz and two Take No Prisoners. Yeah, I've got the same exact review, Adam. Number seven, Stoicism. Is an on top of the 10 Polista, number 11 there, Quest of Venus, and the 9 Western Temple. Race number three at Belmont Park, another maiden here over the 1400 metres now. And there's a few handy types in here that I think as well. We'll see a couple like the someday, one day really improve over the 14. And Drini's certainly got some improvement there. And Argyle Express certainly been knocking on the door. Yes, has already had the run over 1400 metres has Argyle Express. And we'll have a look at that recent replay. We're beaten by a smart one in Lone Sailor. Just pride back behind those searching for the way through at the 300 and Argyle Express, who they've had a good go at at the first level. Led by two and a half lengths to Bell Montgomery running to second lane. Sailor is starting to thread its way through down towards the inside. It's coming home with a mighty run. Lone Sailor's coming at Argyle Express. Lone Sailor picking up Argyle Express. There's a brilliant ride by the Pontiff. Came away from them. Lone Sailor beat Argyle Express. Miss Meek. This horse has certainly had its chances. It's had the claim as well of Jordan Turner. So it's been getting that one and a half kilos off its back. The last four runs, three seconds and a third. The form lines are good enough here. William Pike goes on board. And we know a lot of the time that's just to make sure the horse gets over the line. Now, I'm still not you know, declaring this horse in a field like this, but from the form lines that we've seen, Barrier 7, the way conditions should be playing, this horse should be winning. Certainly should, Adam. And uh, Jordan Turner hasn't really done too much wrong on the Galloper at its uh, previous starts, but as you mentioned, just run into a couple of handy ones like that start, uh, last start behind Lone Sailor. It was a genius ride from Paul Harvey in, t in a tougher maiden as well, I think, Adam. So, look, I think uh, it is the day for Argyle Express here. We've also got in the race, number one there, someday, one day from the Justin Warwick Stable. Was very good last start behind Luke's goal, but again, that was one of those blanket finishes. So... Form has to be queried. Yeah, this is a horse I think that's going to improve just the further they go. The 1,400 metres is a big tick. The negative here, obviously, is barrier 15. It's going to be given Argyle Express five lengths at the top of the straight. That's a lot to make up at Belmont Park as well. So although I think this horse will certainly improve and we're going to see it just uh, it leaps and bounds, I think, now to be a couple of lengths that will improve each run, I still find it pretty hard to see how it's going to make the distance up at the top of the straight. Number eight, Corrente, the blinkers go on, which this mare seemed to need in that run in the same race behind Luke's gold. Yeah, I've got a big opinion of this mare as well. Followed her last campaign. You only have to take a look at that run behind Chocoholic. Uh, it was also behind Touch of Silver last campaign as well. From Barrier 8, with the blinkers going on, I expect her to improve, and I've got her in my numbers as well. But I'm going with 7, Argyle Express, from one Sunday, one day. Number 3, Andrini, which just has to improve at 8, Corrente. I've got the 7 on top, Argyle Express, from the 8, Corrente. 9, Lexton Express, and if it gets a run, number 16, Dago Lane. Race number 4, at Belmont Park, it is Perth. Race number 7 for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 1,650 metres. There are a few horses. Of course, this is a horse that hasn't won a Metropolitan race in the last 12 months. There's a few in this that are a little bit out of form, but a couple that have been knocking on the door, uh, like Futurism, which almost got the chocolates at Kalgoorlie last start. Another one, Prentice, was an excellent last start winner in the heavy going. A superb ride from Jared Noski. Let's have a look at that run, beating Faux Shizzle. Between them and gets the split, Faux Shizzle, though, gathered them up quickly and races to the lead, Faux Shizzle. Prentice now starts to wind up, coming down the middle. It's Faux Shizzle down to the 200 with Prentice in pursuit. It's Prentice coming at Faux Shizzle. Faux Shizzle, Prentice further back, Mystic Dust, Golbo. It's still Faux Shizzle. Prentice, though, pegging it back stride by stride and Prentice has prevailed. Prentice beat Faux Shizzle. Good performance there by Prentice, really handled the conditions on that occasion it was a heavy nine over the 1700 metres so you know here that the 1650 is going to be no issue Jared Noski is riding in sensational form as well five attempts at tracking distance two victories now the horse has certainly got the class and let's hope now that with that win he can just start getting into a bit of a rhythm Faux Shizzle has since come out and run very well in town as well on a Saturday I should say so that form really 
stacks up nicely. Number number six there, Daisy Express. I just think that this is a race that uh, she could pop up at big odds. Uh, but look, she's been running well. She should be a lot fitter now and uh, could get the nice run from barrier two. There's plenty of positives and there's plenty, plenty of negatives as well with this galloper. So it just depends which way you want to go. If you want to look at the positives, she's tough. She'll race on speed, barrier two, 54 and a half kilos. The negatives can be the form lines there. So beaten three lengths by Imperius, beaten four lengths by Politics and four lengths by War God as well. They are not anything to write home about. But I'm with you. I, I look more at the positives with her for this race compared to the negatives. I think she'll be in the lovely position to her at the race. And you just know that she's going to give all the way to the line. Number five, Ty Tycoon Target from the Stelmec Yard. Now, they've had no luck with this uh, this gelding by Black Fries. Alan Kennedy jumps on here, takes the ride from Lucy Warwick. Hopefully, that can make the uh, winning difference. Alan Kennedy's had a little bit of luck with this galloper. Of course, it lost by 30-odd lengths, and he hopped on board after a trial and only lost to Falcon Crest by two lengths. But take a look at the last four barriers. 15, 9, 11, 8, and they've drawn 10 again here. And when I did the speed map again, like the last four starts, I still had this horse three wide. It's becoming the master of just having no cover at all. But for mine, it's probably the difference between winning and running a nice fourth. Number seven as well there, Futurism. I know, Adam, one of your favourite mares, this mare by Lonrose, seven years old. Actually put in a good run last start at Kalgoorlie. Yeah, she really did. She was unlucky. I thought probably about 50 metres, 75 metres out, she was going to get the chocolates there. Just love to see her get another win. She's obviously going to go breed very shortly. So hopefully she can get another win in town, which would be great for her to bring up her eighth for her career. This is her 75th start. From barrier three, we're 54 and a half. She'll have every chance as well. But I'm going with those faux shizzle Saturday form lines, as you mentioned, and putting number two, Prentice, on top from seven futurism, one right honourable and four little shadow. I'm going with the six days the express on top, I just think it it's a nice race from Barrier 2, you can get a lovely run in transit. Number 7, Futurism, 9, Night Prowler, and the 2, Prentice. <laughs>